this. Hi. Today I'm going to uh, continue my little discussion that I've been posting on the divinity of Christ, which uh, is Jesus' claim to be God. And uh, what I wanted to talk about today, it, well, lately I've been, like I said, I got a lot of this stuff out of Baker's Encyclopedia of Christian Apologetics. And then I also got a lot of it from my own Bible study. And today I wanted to uh, show you something in Isaiah. And Isaiah is, again, one of the prophets that God used to tell Israel that they needed to repent before the Babylonians came to destroy them. And uh, if you go to Isaiah 41.4, you're going to see this. Who has done such mighty deeds, summoning each new generation from the beginning of time? It is I, the Lord, the first and the last. I alone am He. Now, when we think of that, uh, I think Jewish listeners, if they had heard anybody claim to be the first and the last, they would have immediately thought of this passage, Isaiah 41, 4. But Christians, a lot of times, we think of this passage, if you go to Revelation 1.8, we hear Jesus say that he's the first and the last. Uh, again, here Jesus is talking to John, and he came uh, in a vision to John to tell him some of the things that were going to happen at the end of time. And in John 1.8, we see Jesus say, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is who always was and who is still to come, the Almighty One. Now John ends up writing this, but this isn't the only spot where God told John to write this down. If you go to uh, verse 17 and 18, Jesus says it again. And John says this, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead, but he laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Now, when Jesus, last video, you probably heard me say that to the Jewish ears of the time, this is 2,000 years ago or so when Jesus came, the Jewish listeners would have heard him say this, and they would have said, uh, he's making claims about himself that only God can make. When they heard, when um, John's listeners or readers read this and saw that Jesus again was making claims about himself, they would have said, here Jesus is making claims that he is God again. Um, but it's not the only place that John tells us this. Um, John also tells us in chapter 1 of his gospel, this that famous, famous passage that you'll hear a lot of people talk about, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, some people like to say, yeah, but that's not talking about Jesus, and um, that's really talking about God, but it's not. And, and if you read that entire chapter, you're going to see, I'm not going to do the whole chapter because it'll take up too much time for this video, but I urge you to go check it out on your own. But I'm going to give you just a, a little bit. It says here, in the beginning, this is in the New Living Translation, in the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. All right, so here we have something called the Word that John is saying this was God. So now we have to say, well, what was the Word? He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. Now John is changing up his metaphor here, and he's going from the Word, and now he's saying that the Word is also light, which we're going to get into that in another video, but let's just continue on here for just a minute. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Now all of a sudden, John shifts gears, and he starts talking about John, but he hasn't stopped talking about the light. God sent a man named John the Baptist to tell about the light, so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. Now you got to remember, they say that John, the, not John the Baptist, but John the Apostle, was originally one of John the Baptist's disciples. Now, so if anybody had the authority to write about what John the Baptist thought, this would have been the guy. Because not only was he one of John's disciples, he was one of Jesus' disciples. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness 
to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believe him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. So here we've got this light, whatever, we haven't determined what that is yet. And we know that the light is also the word because they're linking the two together. So let's keep going and see what the light is or who the light is. We know that it's a person and we know that John testified about it. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Now I'm at verse 13. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word, this is the word of God at the beginning, became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about when I said someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. Now John already knew, I believe, that Mark had written down his Luke had written down their Gospels, and I think this was John explaining this stuff to um, to go over the other stuff, because if you remember right, or if you've studied this, you'll know that John was the last disciple to, to live. He was not executed like the rest of the disciples. He actually survived uh, way into the, uh, into, um, or way past the other ones. He did get boiled in oil. He was sent to the Isle of Patmos, where he uh, lived a long time and then apparently he moved back to Ephesus and lived out the rest of his life there so he wrote John the gospel the three uh, letters of John and then also the book of Revelation after I believe all the other disciples had uh, been martyred and so here he is knowing what the other disciples had written knowing what the others had written about the account of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus because if you recall in that passage he says Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Well, this is what John is, is talking about the, here. This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. So here we have the Word, but we also have that he's the first because he existed before. He was from the beginning. He's also going to be the last, and he will never, ever, ever cease to exist. And so here we have Jesus again, or at least his disciples in this case, um, claiming that he was God. So this whole idea that, well, Jesus never claimed to be God, and the early church never believed that he was God, is not it's just not true, because right here we see that they did believe that he was God. One last thing that I wanted to show you is in John 17, verse 5. If you come over here to chapter 17, in verse 5, he says, Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. So here again, Jesus is saying that he himself was at the beginning before anything was ever created. The world, and uh, so this whole idea that his glory was there, and then um, maybe he was just one of many gods or whatever. No, he was God. He was with God. He was God. They were together, and this is another crucial passage of why we believe in the Trinity, because we know that Jesus was God, but he says that he wasn't God, but the Father, we know that God the Father is God, but he says that he's not God the Son, and we know that the Holy Spirit is God, but God the Spirit does not say that he's the Spirit of the Son, or that he does not say that he's the Son, he also does not say that he's the Father. It's the best example I ever heard of this is the mathematical concept, one plus one plus one equals three. That's not what's happening here. What's happening here is one times one times one equals one. You have the essence of God in three different versions, but it's still God. There's three distinct persons, yet they, separ they exist separately from eternity. So I hope that maybe something I said today helped you out that this is uh, just the next step. The next time we come back together to talk about this, we're going to talk about uh, the Good Shepherd reference that Jesus used. So I hope to see you next time, and I hope you have a great day, and God bless.